This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Gwen Whitaker. We're back out July the 1st, Saturday night goes down, another eight rounder. Sort of a typical question, I know you said you've been playing Call of Duty, but how's camp gone mate? Yeah, of course, we all have a lap up there and whatnot, but uh, very cliche, no stones been left unturned. I've worked very hard as usual and uh, I'm expecting a good outcome. And obviously working with Sugar, since you linked up with him as a professional, being in the amateurs, how much would you say your game has improved, would you say? Mostly, yeah, my game's always been there. Obviously, you slowed things down, you try and hurt them now, but I said the main thing is my mentality's changed. Um, I'm trying to hurt them now, I'm looking to hurt them now, but with that, I'm still keeping my slick style, so it can combine and hurt them even more. And obviously, after sort of overcoming the injury now, just trying to get back out there and try and be there as active as possible, do you feel like sort of you learnt a lot from that injury in a way and being away from the ring? 100%. Um, a lot of people, I knew, I know I talk a bit of rubbish, but a lot of people don't like it. But I sometimes talk it because I train so hard. I literally work myself down till I'm depleted. And it's a good thing and a bad thing. I don't need nobody pushing me, but now I need people to tell me to rest. And that's what the, the injury taught me. Okay, sometimes you're overdoing it. Just calm yourself down and you'll perform better. And I did that for my last fight. I felt good. And I've done it again here. And obviously now this is another eight rounder against a sort of a, a tough opponent. When you think of it about sort of yourself so far, how quickly do you think you would like to be moved across, like, or what Ben sees in you and other other, other promoters see in you? Yeah, this is my first eight rounder actually. But uh, to be fair, I've been doing ten rounds, twelve rounds sparring. Of course, sparring, sparring. But I know the rounds are in the bank. Um, for me, it's just about breaking the opponent down, looking good, and whenever whenever my promoter, my team. And I feel ready to move on. It's a business at the end of the day. I want a lot of people to know me before they know me and then get the big fights. Because when you think of it, you're, so, you're sort of a, a big star in the making where that could see that you, so, you sort of want to get moved quickly, but you also got to understand that there's all a process. But would you sort of want to be moved quickly in a way? You sort of, do you have like a plan where you look and think like sort of within 10 fights or I want to be in this sort of position? I did, yeah, but after the injury, so I don't know. You can never say never. So for me, it's just about keep winning, keep putting on great performances, and get myself into that position where, when I can, I can fight for a world title. The end goal is obviously world champion. So whatever happens in between, that doesn't really matter for me. And sort of one thing that you always say about fighters is having that sort of draw, having that thing. That's something you've got. You know, you've got the change, you've got the flash, you've got the walkouts, and. You can also fight as well, you know what I mean? It's, the most important thing is that you can fight, so bringing all them things along, how important is that, is that for you? And can we see things something on Saturday night? Luckily enough, yeah, I can fight, thank the Lord, uh, but that's your bread and butter, you know. Put all the glitz and glam to the side, I can fight. I've been doing it with nobody watching me now. Luckily enough, I can do it with people watching me, and um, it's entertainment sport. You've got to keep the fans entertained if they love it or they don't. Uh, they're paying the hard-earned money to see something happen, so I'm trying to make that happen. And sort of with that, you always get, you know, your 40, 50 year old dads, the, the, the traditional guys that hate it. But for someone like me, I love it. So how do you deal with that sort of the criticism? And do you think it's sort of when you get that hate, it drives you on more? Because people are solely, probably, people are probably going to want to see you get beat and that and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So it makes you step your game up even more. There's going to be a lot of annoyed people when I just keep winning. But uh, sadly, those people have to understand that we're in a new era now. Uh, the times have changed a little bit. I know, just get with it. But at the end of the day, you can't please everyone. The main thing is just to please the people around me and keep winning. And another thing, with all the, with all the sort of the, the, the hype around you, the hype that comes with sort of desperate, not desperation, but everyone vies for your signature. Being a man in demand, you know, you saw sort of Eddie Hearn saying, it's talking about the sort of signing you for Matchroom and stuff like that. Having that sort of demand for a fighter, where you see sort of fighters who, who you know, they can't get signed with a big promoter, but yourself, you're in so many good positions, must be sort of a blessed feeling for you. Hundred percent, I'm. It's one of them, I, I know 100% I'm lucky and I don't take it for granted, but then I work for this, so it just shows that any boxer can get into this position if they work hard. I didn't do nothing spectacular, like, didn't do no magic or nothing like that. All I did was work hard, went to the tournaments I was supposed to do, win, perform, and when I got the opportunity, take it, and that was it. Ben Wickoff, thank you for your time. I always appreciate it, and uh, all the best on Saturday, mate. Thank you.